Hi friends, I'm back. So today we will uh, discuss gamma root in order to identify spontaneous and non-spontaneous processes. So in order to apply this method we need to have this table that you can see on your screen. So this is the table of standard electrode cell potentials. And uh, I will take an example one example of a process and we will discuss if this process is spontaneous or not. So how to identify if a process is spontaneous or non-spontaneous applying gamma rule? Let's see. Let's take this process. So we see that bromine with a negative charge and stun with a, the charge to plus and they converge into bromine to zero, stun zero. So we see that bromine gives his electrons and becomes zero. So he's a reducing agent, he's oxidized, and stannum takes two electrons, so he's reduced, it means he's an oxidizer, and becomes stannum zero. And we can see also the opposite way. The reverse reaction when brom zero becomes brom minus and stannum zero becomes stannum two plus. So we should know that oxidizer one and reducer 2 when they react together and give the products like oxidizer 2 and reducing 1 reducing agent 1 such a process will be spontaneous how to identify oxidizer 1 oxidizer 2 reducer 1 and reducer 2 let's see so for this process for this reaction let's write half reactions when they both reduce Then what we do, we need to find their cell potentials. Let's see. So we are back to this table, as I showed you at the beginning of the video. We see that for bromine, the cell potential, we see it's 1.09, and for stannum it's 0 0.15. We write them. So we write electric potential of the cell for each of them. We see that for bromine it's 1.09 volt, for stannum it's less, it's 0 0.15 volt. So for bromine it's higher, this value is higher. We draw such an arrow, as so you see. On the left side we will draw oxidizers, on the right side we will draw reducers. On the top part of this arrow we write such a half reaction which has a higher potential of cell. So that will be bromine. Let's try it. So oxidizer 1, as we said, will be that atom or that species which has a higher value of cell potential. So below we write the one which is smaller. It will be stannum and stannum 0. Then we draw gamma, such a Greek gamma letter. As we said at the beginning, the spontaneous process will be when oxidizer 1 reacts with reducer 2 and we get oxidizer 2 and reducer 1. We see that gamma is directed from oxidizer 1 from bromine to stannum to reducer 2. So oxidizer 1, reducer 2 will be bromine 2 and stannum. As an oxidizer 2, we get stannum 2 plus and reducer 1 bromine minus. So we go in this direction. So oxidizer 1 and reducer 2 on the left side of the arrow give the products which are on the right side of the arrow oxidizer 2 and reducer 1. And such a reaction will be spontaneous. And let's now compare this spontaneous process with our process. It is in the circle, the main reaction. We see that the one I wrote it with the red color, we understood it's spontaneous. But in reality, we have the opposite reaction. Like the reaction which is coming from the back side. Yes, it's opposite reaction. So 
Indeed, it means that this process is non-spontaneous. So our process is non-spontaneous because it goes in the opposite direction. Let's see this formula. So potential of cell is potential of cathode minus potential of anode. So if uh, potential of cathode is bigger than potential of anode, potential of the cell will be positive. So uh, it means delta G will be, will be negative. Such process will be spontaneous. We can say they are reverse for non spontaneous process. You can take some examples, practice yourself. That's all for today, uh, and see you in our next videos.